The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. It's my pleasure to be here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time. I follow Steve Rose. Steve did a great two hours. Comes up. Oh, today, of course, is Tuesday. So Tuesday is Options Hour. Victor Jones. That should be fabulous. This is all. Oh, this must be a perfect time for these options strategists. We're getting to a kind of an overbought level. Um, mm. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, so um, today, and then of course you've got um, Daryl Martin, you got Dave White, you got Ken Shreve, and Tom O'Brien wraps it up at four to six. What more could you want? Now we've got the Dow up thirty-two. You know, I keep talking about this, and it is um, how can I put it? There has really been a sideways consolidation since that explosive move back on uh, 31st of December, January the 2nd. And then we've kind of gone sideways. Are we building steam to go right through the upside, right through 14,200, start all-time highs in the Dow? Are we about to bump into resistance? Are we about to slide four, five, six, seven hundred 700 points of the downside? All of those answers can be wrapped up in one number and one word. I'm going to put the before it, and that is the three bears. As long as the volatility index remains benign, as long as bonds can't, the TLT can't get to that over the 118.70 area. Right now it's at 116.70. As long as gold is pulling back. Uh, well, that wasn't one of the three bears. This is something else. This is the, the, uh, the uh, fear factor. That's gold. That is the currency of fear. Um, but the third one always is the dollar. The dollar had a very nice rally, and then it just stalled. And what we're looking at is, if the factors that have got us to this particular place, for instance, uh, Zittau in the dead answered, and he said one word, unknown. Obviously, it's unknown. How, how on earth could we tell what the very next minute's going to be when you're talking about life and and what is the market? It is a price point of a moment in time. But that's not really true. Because if we have the factor of the Fed continuing to push money into this market, their objective was to get the market to rally and to keep interest rates low and to see a housing recovery. And the other factor was on the side and that was to kind of repair and to prop up and to to kind of organize the banking sector in such a way that it looked like uh, most of the problems have been resolved. So I'm going to put a lot of weight in that because for me it's real simple. If, and I have a chart right up here at this particular moment, if you're looking at Tiger TV, what is it? It was a request in the gen. Would I look at... Uh, F-R-G-I, this is Fiesta Restaurant Group. I saw it going by a couple of times as a symbol. I didn't realize it was just a recent IPO. It's gone from the 11 area to today's high, or all-time high, uh, within a, just a matter of uh, eight months or something like that, seven months. Uh, it's gone to 19.27 uh, was the height at 19.20. So, yes, I'm going to get to that. I, asked, I was asked a question by one of my subscribers. I'd like to get to that. Great question. Um, current subscriber, interesting article and question. I, I read the article, and the question is on the JNK, which is the junk bond uh, fund uh, symbol, JNK. And, yes, I, he fabulous. He did great work. He did exactly the same uh, Chapman wave notation, as I have, um, understands the waveform very well. Had a great question. So let me do this. I'm going to run all the numbers. The Dow is up 35 at 14,006. 
Mm, very exciting. The S and P is up one point two six at fifteen eighteen. The comp index is up one and a half at thirty one ninety three. Always have to say, what is Apple doing? And Apple is right the second. Apple is winning. Apple, come on, Apple, you were right there. Uh, down four at four seventy five. Um, let's go to uh, the next. We've got gold up twenty cents. It was down sharply yesterday and then down earlier this morning, about seven, eight points, and it's bouncing back. Hey, that's fine. Silver up 0.04 at 30.90. Platinum's up 22 at 17.12. And high grade copper's bouncing, give, getting back some of the, of the loss that it had yesterday to 3.73. Crude oil is at 97.59. Remember, I did a little study yesterday on crude oil. Those are the numbers that we're going to be watching real closely. And bonds are down 17.30 seconds. So let me go through this. Quick question is, um, what I am, what am I anticipating? That pattern that I've been talking about, the psychology of buying every single dip, the psychology of having no more than a one to three day uh, pullback before making a new recovery high, that is in place. I'm anticipating there's a chart pattern. I'm going to be going through all of these in great detail tomorrow night in my free webinar for my subscribers to the opening call. You can go to the front page, check it out. If you subscribe for two weeks free, you're, 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 you're welcome to come. I'll show you. I'm going to be going not only through charts, but through through. Other factors, for instance, right here, this is what I'm working on. Uh, the little voice wagging its finger. That could be a separate webinar all by itself. Number one, when you are about to take a position as something is telling you, don't do it. How many times has that made you money? Number two, when your gut tells you to take profits and your mind intellectualizes it, it should go a little higher or lower. How many times has that worked for you? I'm going to discuss that. I'm going to discuss how that sounds like it's a put down but in fact there are people that are able to trade this way and you've got to know when you're able to trade with with the voice the finger sitting on your shoulder the little the little elf the little uh um, um that that the market um what do i always call them not the elves but the market Gods, oh, the trading gods, that's right, lowercase t, lowercase g, the, the trading gods sitting there saying, ah, yeah, you get, you're getting greedy, and you say, no, I think it's going to go on the line, but sometimes that's exactly what you need, and Adamant in the Den says, intuition, you know, it's how you are able to use intuition. Absolutely. And I'll discuss a whole bunch of things. I'll discuss chart patterns. I'll discuss what we do in my opening call, why I'm looking at what I'm looking at, what I'm expecting, why I keep talking about this pattern of stalked leg formation. What the heck is that? Anyway, so FRGI is uh, Fiesta Restaurant Group. And it's in leg E slash B in the daily chart, having done really well. Stochastics at 71%. MACD is pulled back, but the price has gone higher. So you have to say to yourself, if the MACD does cross positive, that's going to allow it to go to at least another couple of peaks to the upside in the daily. The weekly had a perfect peak F. A build, this is just what a great example of the, one of the quickest monthly charts going from a low bar, most identifiable low bar, in this case, the low bar of uh, $10.95 in May of 2012, two, through three months after it came public, an IPO. And then it went straight up to 1757, September of the week of September the 21st, 2012, plunged down to, I think it was 1250 or something, 12, 1290, 1296 in October of um the week of the 19th of October of last year, and then it ran up, and now it's in leg D. So you've got E slash D in the in the uh, in the in the daily. You've got leg D in the weekly, which with nothing there negative is still very strong. Saying it could pull back to the 1755 nine period moving average, and the monthly is only in leg B. Now I'm talking about leg B, but you know what? Monthly charts can work very quickly. Look at cause. Uh, cause is Michael Cause Holdings. That was in B, and I looked at it. Held the nine period moving average. Sorry, the 200 period moving average in the in the monthly chart, and then it just took off. And I'm saying to myself. Is it, yeah, I can't, I'm not sure. Wow, look at that. Leg C up, went right through the $60 round number high, peak E in the daily. So let's go back to your stock, because I'm going to have to retype and refine what the, the, the symbol was. F something, F, F, I'll find it right now. FRGI. FRGI. And right now, 
and he's acting very well. Let me grab the 120-minute chart. This is A, A, Recycle A. I'm going to call that 7170. Yeah, B, C. Yeah, I can see it going higher. Um, and then it should get a little bit toppy, coinciding with a lot of what I'm looking at in the market. My sus are you long? Are you, are, are you long? I can't imagine you're short, Reed. Uh, so I suspect if you're long... Keep holding it. I like it. I think it's doing very well. On a sh that's if you've got a core position. On a shorter term position, if it goes back underneath the high of the 22nd of January, 18.95 was the high, I'd be a little careful. Why? Because 18.41 is really important to hold. If it breaks 18.41, it's going to take a little time in the weekly chart to digest. So far, it's really a nice-looking stock. Um, it just depends on where you got in. So I like it. Um, I think it's just a tad overextended in the daily. The weekly is still very strong. It's a 19.20 FRGI. I think it could pull back towards the 1820 to the 1730 level. Uh, in at 13, keep that as a core. Now I'm going to go to something else completely different. Keep that as a core. You might want to start raising your stop to 18.41 on some part of your position. And then a third of that position, a little trading position, I would say that if it goes towards the 1938 to 1949, 1951 area, you can take some part of that right off. And that's the part that you want to possibly put back if it starts to hold in the 1850 to 1830 area um, and the, and on a weekly basis. But uh, I think you're doing that fabulous, absolutely fabulous. That uh, congratulations, you're in six, uh, you're up uh, almost 50 percent, and that is absolutely terrific. So now I had another question. I'm going to just go to the next question here. Uh, Whoops, I've got a phone call. I, I got a call on the line. I'll go to the call. Then I'll go right back. I want to get my subscribers' question as well on the JNK. So, we're going to go to Mike in Long Island. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Um, Harley Davidson gets yes. to a peak F on the monthly, then it, it really didn't go down, and, and uh, it starts making its way back up. Can you analyze? Uh, you know, I spent, I, I spent a lot of time on this over the weekend. I'm saying to myself, let me go back to my old favorites, let me, the ones that I look at all the time. And I'm saying to myself, wait, Harley Davidson makes an all-time high. Hog is the symbol, folks. It's trading at 53.46. It makes, I, on my white chart, I've not got it notated all the way back, but in fact, I will notate it all the way back at some point on my black background charts I do. The stock went from uh, 3550 back in March of 2003 to a peak E-top at 63.75. And then it made a cup formation. Just a beautiful, it's what's called in the Chapman Wave, it's called a cup and ladle breakout. And what does it do? It goes all the way to what was looking like an F slash B. It turned around 75.87, was a peak F top, and then plunged to $7.99 in 2009. Why would it be doing so well if the economy was doing so badly? I'll be right back with Mike in Long Island. The question on the junk JNK bond fund. And in the den, there are a couple of questions. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Trapp and Tiger Technicians Hour. Dow's up 26. S&P's up 0.74. It's amazing how the market's just been kept up. But at some point, even if I see it spiking higher, I think we're going to start a, a, some kind of a deeper consolidation. I'll talk about that in a little while. We're on with Mike in Long Island, New York, and we're looking at HOG. HOG is Harley Davidson, and it's trading at 53.48. Now, do you have a position in this? No, oh, not yet. Okay, and from your voice, the tone of your voice tells me you're looking at the short side if you're going to do anything. Is that correct? No, I want to hear what you have to say. I I'm I'm want to make money. Okay, all right. Well, then this is what I'm looking at. You see the doji candle of yesterday. First of all, the peak de height, 54.62. I don't see any uh, round. Yes, I do. A round number close on 53. Oh, that makes it easy. So there's a round number close at 53 on the 30th, the day after, to confirm peak D. So 53 is going to be the level to watch. If today is Tuesday, if by Thursday afternoon or Friday morning, Harley-Davidson has not been able to close above 53, but instead is trading at 52.20 or lower, that would say to me that while the weekly chart has made a double top with a fabulous move back up to the 54.32 area, high of the week of the 4th of May of 2012, it went higher here, it went to 54.62. I'm always fascinated how it comes back in within, within pennies, so that's 30 cents higher. It hasn't closed above that. So this is what I'm looking at. Um, there is, 
Technically, at st- the stochastic and the weekly is at 88% and the MACD is still good. The monthly chart MACD is good, not great, but good. It's not as good as it was when it went to the, to the major high, um, that 54.60, what did I say it was? Um, 54.32 high. Uh, 54, yeah, 54.32 high. Um, <clears throat> and the stochastic is running back nicely. But this is what I'm really looking at. In the in the weekly chart, there's a good chance that we're getting into this consolidation area and that Harley needs to pull back towards 51, between 51.70 and I would say 50.30, somewhere around there. 51.38 is the nine period moving average to make the handle for a potential cup formation. 53 is the number. If it closes above 53, there's a real good chance it's going to might try to retest the 54.62 high of the 29th of January. In terms of wave count, I, I don't know what it will be because we don't, we, uh, I can't tell you when it's going to do it. I can just say that if it does it, let's just say there's no new high to, new recovery high today. So if it does it on Tuesday, it starts to break above 54.11, that will be leg C what I call gray C, and then the moment it passes 54.62, I have to give that a parallel wave count. If at that point the stochastic is still underneath about 68, is at 55, 56% now, and the MACD hasn't crossed positive, my guess is that Harley will start to turn down. So here's my scenario. At this particular point, if I was to choose technically which way Harley would break, I would say that it's probably not going to, if it even touches 54, 62, it probably won't close very much higher. That's number one. Number two is if it closes underneath 52, 66, which is the low of yesterday, of two days ago, the candle that I'm looking at with that long wick of the seventh at 51, 58, the low, I think it's going to be pulling back. So if I was to favor a Two and a half point move at this particular point, which direction? <clears throat> I would say that it has much less to go on the upside, and that the two and a half points would probably be to the downside. But as a trade, there is nothing I would do at this particular point. Why? It's bumping up against strong resistance in the weekly, the monthly, and perhaps the daily. If it slices through and gets to 55.30 or something like that and closes there, Suddenly, you're looking at the stochastic and the MACD probably turning up in the in the in the daily, and it could go higher. So I'm going to say to you, you stepped aside right now, waiting patiently to say which way which way would you go with with Harley. I would say to you, hold off. Everything about the chart suggests, even the 120 minute chart suggests that <clears throat> excuse me that there's a there's a very good chance that it's going to come back within the next five to nine trading sessions. It's going to come back and it's going to test the low bar of 50.85 made on the 23rd of January. But on the monthly, I'm getting a different count than you. I don't know if it's really... Uh, a, B, C, D, E. Then there's an, uh, an A, F slash B. Uh, you don't get peak F? At 54.32 with a round number 45 low? I get a peak at 88. Um. All right, let's look at it. We'll look at that together as soon as we get back because it's very important. If Harley Davidson breaks above the previous high, I have to call that a new leg. I'll be right back with Mike and Long Island. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
just recently on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We are back, and I've got to thank Mike and Long Island for pointing this out to me. I didn't notice that 30 cent difference in the monthly chart. I do get the peak uh, E. Um, on the in Hog, this Harley Davidson, July uh, July of 2011 at 46.88. Then it pulls back, starts a brand new move, and it goes A. Uh, call, I call it a gray A because it's underneath the previous major peak. Then it breaks to a new high, and then I've got F slash B having made a new recovery high. I, nothing here looks like G. This looks like C, and I like that. That's very positive. So the monthly chart on Harley Davidson is very positive. The weekly chart uh, has made that peak D um, uh, on the f week of the 1st of February, holding very well. But I'm still looking at this, and I think there's a potential for a double top. I think there's going to be some kind of a consolidation, and it might not take all that long. But uh, that that leg in C in the monthly chart is really important because it says, whoops, I've got to take that away. It says that now there's a really good chance that Harley goes higher over the next two months. Okay, so so that that also means that any short, as I was referring to before, would be a, a a fairly quick short because I'd only expect the handle of the cup formation to be formed. So yeah, in fact, I would say that if it was to pull back towards the fifty um, fifty two and a quarter to fifty one area, probably that's why I would look at it as a potential long position. So I hope that helps you. Yep, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate that. Now, folks, let's go. Let's go to this because the question was. Got to find it. 
Um, JNK, JNK, and this is called the um, Spider Barclays um, High Yield Bond Fund ETF. I'm just going to go to the monthly chart first. The monthly chart had a low. Of twenty five fifty five back in March of two thousand nine, that was the the month of the low, the market low. It then went to peak D four higher peaks. So, folks, this is what I'm going to be talking about in my webinar tomorrow night. Taking a bear chart and just showing how I count the peaks because some of my subscribers they work to, they just they don't always have a chance to to look at the charts. They don't always have a chance to listen to the programs. Um, at the same time, this is a free webinar for all my subscribers. And if you if you sign up for the two week free. Um, uh, trial period, you will automatically be able to take this, and it can be archived. So this is a very, it's, it's, it's really, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so what happened is it goes towards the 200 period moving average. It goes to peak D, uh, April of 2010 at 40.24, and then it pulls back. Let me type in the low 25.55. So I remember because this is this is a huge move, percentage wise at 40.64 where it is right now. JNK is the symbol. Trading at 40.64, up 16 cents. Now, what's interesting is it's acting differently even today than bonds themselves. So this is the bond, the junk bond, um, Barclays High Yield ETF. Then it squeaks to a peak E uh, in November of 2010, pulls back sharply, and it comes back to where? It comes back to 34, yep, 34.09. So 34.09 starts a brand new uh, buy signal, and that's what it's in. So unless I'm right off the wall about this, everything about it says it's trying to hit, to, it's at 40.64, it's trying to hit towards the 4210 area, and then you've got to be really careful. So that would say that the monthly chart is still positive, not fantastic, but still positive. Ha! The weekly chart made a peak E and a very sharp decline. But it's holding the 50 period. Uh, is that the 50? I can't remember anymore. I believe it's the 50. 32 period exponential moving average. And that 32 period moving average, which I've been experimenting with for quite some time now, I, I'm, I'm beginning to like it. I, I, in fact, I maybe will put more preference on the 32 than the 52, than the 50, that is. And now look at this. It's, if it can close above 40.78, the nine-period exponential moving average in the uh, weekly chart, they'll say, good, nice recovery, could make a U-shaped formation and just barely squeak above the 41.43 high of the week of the 25th of February. And that'll be either leg F or maybe a brand new buy mode. I don't know, but that's where we watch the monthly. Now the daily says, ha, 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 are you out of your mind? That was one heck of a drop, all the way from 41.43 to 40.40, uh, .40. you don't think that's much in bonds, believe me, that's a lot. So that says, be careful, because it is a rally here, but unless it can close decisively over the candle of the 1st of uh, February, about 40.81, and get into that next candle, let alone the ugly, the ugly candle of the 30th of um, January, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. So, so far, all I can say is that the monthly, the longer term says that we should go higher in, bond, in the junk bonds, it's not a guarantee, but that's the way chart appears to be. The weekly says, whoa, that was a quick smash. You better hurry and, and repair yourself quickly. You're at 71% <clears throat> in the MACD, in the stochastic. MACD is kind of okay, but did cross negative. This has to repair it by Wednesday. What's today? By tomorrow a week to Thursday a week, especially a, fr a week from Friday. The weekly chart needs to see... A, a, a price point above 40.85. That's really important. The daily says, 40.85, are you out of your mind? You better go very quickly back to the 40.90, 40 to the 41 area, because that's the only way you're going to be able to make either a V or a sharp cup formation recovery. But in the meantime, unless the junk bond decisively breaks below 40.40, 40, 
That's a do, uh, 40.40, 24 cents from where we are right now. That would say 40.50 is the very important 200 period exponential moving average. So, yes, you, all your notation uh, was absolutely correct, uh, uh, Najid, and um, congratulations. Most importantly, what I'm looking at is how does this recover? It's got a flat stochastic. It needed a V-shaped recovery stochastic to say, I'm going on my way back. This is gonna this this might be a struggle, but the monthly says at some point this should be a higher high. Now, question in the dead. Uh, what, what did I forget? Yeah, uh, let me just get to FSLR. Now you know the solar stock, especially with the um, President Obama giving his talk tonight. Is it tonight? I think it's tonight. Um, you know, uh, he's going to talk about. Uh, I'm sure he's going to talk about solar energy and all that. That's one of the reasons why these solar stocks are doing well. So first, solar is trading at 33.33. It's walking the nine period moving average in the uh, monthly chart. That's really quite impressive. And I have to say to you. As much as I think that these guys are, are uh, they're going to have to have huge backing from the government for a long time. Otherwise, they're going to be losers. This is a, a pretty decent chart, and there's a good chance it's going to retest the 35.60 high that was made uh, the week of the 4th of February. And that was a rogue wave in the chapel. I won't have time to do that tomorrow night, but I will discuss some of the patterns that are very important Um and in this particular instance, there's this pattern that, uh, let me just quickly draw it right here. See, it's a very clear, def well-defined down channel. And then if you if you look at, that's not what I would take. I would take that. And that's a, that's a channel line. It's a flag pattern. And it's broken above it. This is a good chance to test 3560. I, and, the, and the MACD and Stochastic are saying, you know what? It could go even higher. There was another one I looked at recently. S-O-L-R, is it? I, I can't remember. All right, so that's that. Now, the question I had was, um, I've got to run around. So we did that, we did that, we did that. Uh, next one is going to be a KC. KC, I'm going to go to the H for now because I think I've got that all notated. This is coffee. Coffee has got a horrendous monthly chart, and the weekly chart is not that much better. The daily chart is just now getting to a price point. Now, this is a pattern that I really do like. Let me explain what I like. Um, I'm going to take this all the way back. I'm going to go to that candle right there. I'm going to go all the way here. I'm looking at coffee. I'm looking at the March coffee, KCH13. That's the way I get it in Trade Station. And now I'm going to do that. There you go. Okay, good. So this is going to be green. So this made a peak C minus and fell. C minus is a lousy, and instead of a uh, um, instead of a an arch formation, it basically made a cup formation, uh, an inverted V formation, went to a lower low. And below the low of 141.25, made on the uh, uh, 31st of December. And now it's just attempting to turn around. So the question is, if this is going to be a rally that is sustainable, then you've got to see the stochastic, which is making a nice turn, and the on-balance volume is making a nice turn. And, you know, folks, I, I've been, had, been getting questions about this. I know Steve has been using it a lot. I see that Daryl's using it. I always have the RSI. Look, there it is. I just make it gray, and there's a, a particular way I have it. When it goes over a certain point, it starts to show up in red at the top. A little bit, it goes below a certain point. It goes to green. I, I, I love the RSI. It's just that the way I use the Chapman wave, there's another indicator that for me is way more precise. That's just in my work. Of course, everybody you know does things different. So I, I had questions. Uh, what about you know? What, I, there's nothing. No, what about is how you use it. Learn how to use these tools. Everybody's teaching something at TFN. We spend a lot of time. That's what we love to do. So if you use the RSI, it's great. I have a particular uh, tool that just in my work, <clears throat> the way I've learned to read it. Just gives me a little clearer reading. That's all. So it's no, it's no, it's not a big deal. So yes, I do like the RSI. It's right there. It's, it's kind of tucked away. It's turning up, making a little W pattern. I like that. But the, but that's not the point. At one forty one point forty five, March coffee futures have to. They have to close three out of four sessions above the nine period exponential moving average at about 143.10 to be able to make the stochastic, to allow it to even get to the teens, let alone 20%, which is what is absolutely imperative in my work. 
But most importantly, the MACD, it needs the time to, to have the fast moving average cross positive. So until, um, so until you can really get substantial move to the upside, I say this is just the start. But I tell you what I do like. You see how long it's taken from the doji low of the 14th of December at 142.20. We've only only gone a point down. I don't know what that is in, in price. <laughs> it might be a fortune, but it's only a point in <laughs> real terms. <clears throat> that, to me, is very important. The C- minus was important. It failed. But the fact that it's attempting and that the... At the there's a positive divergence between the technicals in the in the weekly chart and the price. I think this is a perfect time to at least nibble. I would personally put a stop right under one penny below the if it goes in pennies below the low of of uh, today, which is one thirty eight point fifty five. And then I'm I let me put it this way: if it holds under that one penny below for more than two one hundred and twenty minute bars. I'd be out. I don't mind it just dipping in maybe tomorrow on some news and then close higher. That's really what I want to see, if it dips at all. But preferably 142, 143.10 is the area you want to see it in. And then the base should become 141.60. Okay, so I hope that helps you. With question. Next question, DEC. Uh, J-O, yes, J-O is the uh, ETF. I did that the other day, I thought. J-O. Yeah, you see, J.O., i done the work on this, <clears throat> and now look what's happening. It's exactly the same thing. So if you're into not, you know, you know futures trade all the time. This only trades during the day, day hours, so it's a little more difficult, but it's the same thing. If you're in J.O., which is the ETF, I think it's an ETN. Yes, it's an ETN. They don't hold anything. They just got paper. If it goes under 3106, goes 3105, holds there for more than two 120-minute bars or four one-hour bars, I'd say, uh, get out of there. But if it's able to hold, that's great. So then the next thing is DEC, D-E-C-K. DEC is making legs D. You see, this is what I'm looking at in so many charts. There are so many charts in D or E in the days. They can recycle higher. And that's why I think we are near some kind of... At least hiatus, some kind of a breather, some kind of a some kind of a, a pullback. Um, it might be very selective. It might be rotational, and if that's the case, then if you're in long positions with core positions, I would be looking to add to them. I wouldn't be getting out. I don't think it's that kind of a pullback. But in the meantime, Decker's. Horrible, horrible monthly chart. Uh, Decker's Outdoor, Uggs and Other Shoes made this beautiful top at 118.90 after Chapman Wave Instant Restart uh, from a peak D. Then it has this candle, this doji candle, which says, be careful, because if you pull back sharply for two out of three bars below the body of the wick, that's very negative. What does it do? It goes right underneath the 9 EMA. This is the first time it's touching that 9 EMA since... December of 2011. That is a positive. The MACD is flat. MACD is uh, actually lousy. The, the stochastic is flat. The monthly chart says, okay, everything else has to help me because I can't do it myself. Well, the weekly is helping it because it's legs C up and the MACD is at 80%. So I can, well, the week isn't finished. If on Friday it closes somewhere around here, I can then put an up arrow and say that's leg C and it should go to to D. Where would I have a target? If in fact this really succeeds in holding all the way through Friday and into next week it doesn't close underneath 42.50, then DAC, I would say, has a chance to fill in that really ugly, ugly, ugly candle of the week of the 21st of September, try to touch 48.08, which is the high. But it has to um, 46.02 is the near-term target of the 200-period exponential moving average. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and the Dow is up 31, s and up $1.23. I'll be right back after these messages. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. 
If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great moments are born from great opportunity, and that's what you have here. The opportunity to answer the questions, should I buy or should I sell? Should I be in or should I be out? Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and I produced a free report, Reading the Message of the Markets, where I'll teach you how to use a set of tools that will answer these questions. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com right now and download Reading the Message of the Markets. This free special report includes step-by-step -step video examples that would have had you out of the market before the crash of 1929, before the crash of 1987, and would have had you back in the markets buying at the bottoms. This set of tools works on all time frames and all instruments. This set of tools will shape your trading and investing future. Folks, this moment will never be here again. The only cost is not taking action. You were born to be a money master, and the time is now. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and order Reading the Message of the Markets. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Trapp with Tiger Conditions. Uh, so, yeah, just finishing up on Deckers, it looks to me like this is probably peak E. The MACD is at 90%. The... Uh, Sorry, the MACD is very strong. The stochastic's at 90%. Getting some signals here to say there could be a bit of a pullback. But I would say that 4172-ish, it's at 44.20, 43.50 to 42.50, 41.72 would be really... Um, Saying that the market itself is going to pull back uh, three to five percent. At this point, I think it's acting very well. If you're in it, I would say that's that's good. I would take some of my position, just some of my position off to put back again, or you can just if it's a core and you don't even want to bother, you can hold it. But most importantly, we're getting into a very key area in time, in price, in many things in the stock market. There's oops, we've got a caller right now. We've got John, J Jim in Littleton. Hi, Jim. How are you? Good, Basil. How are you doing? Ah, uh, we've got just enough. I'm doing well. It's a tough time to do. So, so please, I saw your call. You wanted to look at Apple. Do you have a position in Apple? No, not at the moment. 
Okay. My my reasoning on Apple was that Apple would have a balance, and the balance would take it into the into, somewhere into the gap, but it probably wouldn't fill the gap immediately. It would have to bounce around quite a bit. The gap high is five hundred four seventy seven. It's at four sixty nine right now. Down ten. Whoa, down ten, and the low is. The spike bar it opened at 460 and the high of 465.73. I I don't see any reason right now to actually be an Apple. I think that it is telling us it's going to be a bit of a drag on the Qs. But if it did rally, it would start a leg C if it goes above 484.94. I'm going to say... Would you be playing a short or a long or a put or a call? How would you be working with this? Well, I'm wondering what the um, support level is. I was thinking I wanted to put a put on it, but uh, it moved I quickly, was huh? to wait to see if it went to 500 first. I know. It went to peak A, B, C, D. In the, in the 120 minute chart, it just made a Dina's pulling back. You know what I'm thinking here? I just think that it's like bonds. I think it's in a trading range right now. I think Apple's going to, it could go a little higher, but my guess it's going to kind of hold. There are enough people that really want to be in this, looking out, and all of a sudden you can tell how the analysts, every, every hour of the day, they're talking about it one way and then they're talking about it another way. So this is what I'm thinking, that 462 is really the area of good support. It's got a, the pattern, you, I, you know, I talk about this pattern called the dreaded H, looks like a lowercase H, which yeah. can sometimes turn into an M with a greater, a greater arch. This is what I think I'm looking at here. 490.28 is the nine period moving average in the weekly that it hasn't been able to um, cr uh, hold, let alone close above, since the breakdown the week of the 5th of October of 2012. There's a chance that it will try for that at some point, but I suspect, and a lot's going to be depend. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say to you, the best opportunity of be able to buy a put would have been somewhere above 480, because that was kind of the, area, the low of um, the 15th of January was 483. So once it starts to get even close to that area, that's what you've got to be looking at as, as some kind of resistance. I'm going to suggest that you hold off for a minute. Don't do anything, but be prepared to do this. Have a strategy that says if Apple rallies in the next day or two to the 474 area and then fails to hold and starts to come down, what you would want to do on the downside if Apple somehow in the next two days is able to get above 475, let's say, and actually closes towards that level, we could see a nominal peak C. So at this point, if you had to ask me, what would I do? Do I have a preference? I think listening to um, right now coming up, Victor Jones, he's the person to ask. Uh, you know what? I'm going to recommend. Ask Victor Jones what would be the strategy for certain positions, option positions in Apple, how he would best look at it. My thinking is I would hold off and wait to see if it's going to fail or whether it's going to try to make a nominal new high. So I'm saying hold off and ask Victor the rest. Thanks for tuning in. Thank Are you.